Hello, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us uh, for this uh, video series. We'll be talking about uh, John 6, uh, the Bread of Life discourse, and I have a couple things that um, uh, I'll share in the course of this, of this video series. Uh, so today, the topic that we'll focus on is bread. And then and, uh, the, the course of this uh, video series this, the, this week uh, will be focused on, on this verse right here. And it may be a little hard to see, so I'll go ahead and read it. Um, this is uh, John 6, uh, verse 51. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. So that's sort of the, the thematic verse, uh, the central verse uh, for, for this week. Um, so today, uh, I want to, like I say, talk about bread, which uh, appears uh, several times in just that one verse. And I want to uh, approach that word bread um, through a, a, a couple different ways. Um, let's go over here first to Old Testament background. Uh, when Jesus is speaking, when he's giving uh, the, the, the bread of life discourse, as well as any other time in, in the New Testament, he's thinking uh, biblically. He's thinking in terms of the Old Testament. So the first place I want to go in the Old Testament, and I'll just write the reference down here, is the book of Exodus, chapter 16, verses 4 and 5. Actually, if you have time, I'd recommend go back and, and read uh, Exodus 16. Exodus 16 is the story about God's people traveling through the desert, and God gives them manna. Uh, from heaven. God gives them uh, the bread from heaven. They're, they're physically hungry, and so to satisfy uh, and take care of their physical hunger, uh, God, through the intercession of Moses, gives them bread. So that's Exodus 16. And Jesus is going to link Exodus 16 to the bread of life discourse. He says, uh, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the true bread from heaven but my Father gives the true bread from heaven. That's uh, verse 32. So Jesus is kind of pointing back to this Exodus uh, 16, the story of the manna, and saying that, okay, that's what, you know, Mo Moses, uh, you know, he fed the people, but really the, the gift was from God. Uh, another verse uh, is Leviticus 24, um, and this verses 5 through 9, um, and just very briefly, uh, God's people, uh, they came to see that the manna for, uh, that was given in Exodus 16 uh, was, a very, was a very special gift. It spoke to them about God's providence, and it spoke to God's people uh, about His covenant, His relationship with the people. So in Leviticus 24, um, the, the priests had to bake... Uh, special bread, and the, uh, which uh, and twelve loaves of this bread were kept in the in the tent of meeting, where God's presence dwelt with His people as they journeyed through the desert. And this bread uh, it could not be eaten except by by the priest, and a lamp had to be kept lit uh, by this bread. And this bread was a it was a physical reminder of God's covenant. It was a physical reminder of uh, of God's relationship uh, with with His people. And so they, this bread. Uh, was kept in the most sacred space uh, that God's people had as they journeyed through the desert. So those are two quick uh, citations. However, what I want to focus on for the, the majority of this uh, first video is uh, another idea in the Old Testament, and it is the Torah. Now, the Torah... It, Torah it just means law, instruction. Um, uh, it means o o decrees. Uh, the Torah m refers to a couple things. Uh, it refers to, first of all, the, five, the first five books of the Bible, Exodus, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy. So the first five books of the Bible uh, are called the Torah. Uh, the Torah uh, comes to be seen as the central piece of the Jewish scriptures. It's, uh, it's um, uh, God, uh, when, when Moses goes up the mountain in the book of Exodus and receives the law from God, the word that is used is Torah. Moses receives the Torah. 
and it came to be understood as uh, comprising these first five books of the Bible. Listen to how a Jewish uh, theologian speaks about the importance of the Torah for, for the Jewish people. In Judaism, the Torah is accorded the highest level of sanctity above that of the other books of the Bible. One symbol of its significance is that the Torah scrolls are kept in an ark or cabinet in the very front of the synagogue. And when the ark is opened, the congregation stands at attention. Only the, and then only the Torah is read in its entirety. So uh, very much the way that we keep the Eucharist in a tabernacle in our churches, uh, the consecrated uh, uh, bread of life. Uh, in a, if you go into a synagogue, they will have the Torah scroll in a very similar tabernacle or an ark. Uh, it's the highest uh, uh, level of sanctity is given to the, the Torah. Now, what connects the Torah with the manna and then ultimately with what we're talking about here with bread is that the Torah comes to be seen in the Old Testament as the true bread that Moses gave his people. And the place to go, there's two places in particular uh, uh, for this. Uh, the first is Proverbs chapter 9, verse 5, and uh, Sirach 24, verses 21 through 23. So uh, Proverbs 9 and Sirach 24 uh, directly say that the Torah is the bread that comes from God, that uh, in a way the manna that's given by God to His people uh, in Exodus 16 is itself a symbol of what really nourishes God's people, namely God's, God's law, the first five books of the Bible. Um, one last point that I'll say about the Torah, and I'll write it up here since it's important. Um, uh, Psalm 119. Uh, if you have a chance, it's, it's a little long, so, so make sure you have some time, but read slowly Psalm 119. The word Torah, the word for law, uh, God's, uh, the, the, you know, these first five books of the Bible, appears 25 times in Psalm 119. And this psalm is a, is a, is a great hymn of thanksgiving, thanking God because at last... In the, in the Torah, in, in God's law, in His, um, in His instructions to us, we know who we are as God's people, as God's chosen people, and we also know who our God is. You know, the, the law tells us who, who we are and who God is, and it was something to be cherished, something to be celebrated. Okay, um, the Old Testament background, God gives His people bread in the desert, but the true bread comes to be seen as the Torah. So the real gift of Moses is the bread uh, that nourishes spiritually. Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the true bread, meaning the Torah. It was not Moses who gave the true bread from heaven, but I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Jesus is doing something. Um, it would it, it'd be hard to overstate uh, uh, the importance and the significance, and for the Jews, the scandal of what he's doing. He's saying that the Torah is no longer the holiest thing, and it's not the real bread that was given from God. The real bread and the holiest thing now is his flesh that he will give, and, he, and he, the word that kind of links all this together is bread. So the true bread that Christ shares, uh, that he gives, um, is identified with himself. So he, he, you know, if you can think of it this way, Jesus steps in and takes the place of the Torah. So just as the Torah, uh, the, the law, gave people their identity and told them how they could live in relationship to God and just how we should praise the Torah in Psalm 119, all of that gets transferred to Christ. And, and so now Christ, uh, by being joined to Him, being in a relationship with Him, He's the one who shows us uh, who we are. And He's the one who shows us 
how we should live, uh, no longer by focusing on an, on an object, a, you know, a scroll, but his flesh, which is the living bread come down from heaven. Thank you all, and we'll see you next time.